Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, one of the things I want to talk about is a little bit of a tutorial on headless mode. So, uh, kind of cover out some things. So, we're going to start here at the bench, then we're going to go outside and do a little bit of test flights. But it's easier sort of here at the bench to kind of demonstrate a couple different pieces. So, one of the first pieces, and this, this is sort of generally atypical for, you know, most drone usage or quadcopters, so when they start out, they start out in, in transactional mode. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. But what that means in basic terms is the copter has a head and a tail to it. And that's typically indicated by colored lights on the bottom. So you can see here the front is red. The back is green in this case. And, and you can kind of tell from the markings, you know, both on the top here as well as the direction the camera's pointing. means this is the head of the, the quadcopter. So whenever movement or transactional movement, as we call it, happens, it happens with this being the perspective of the front or looking forward. Now, what does this mean? So I want to jump over here to the controller and just cover out a few of the basics real quick on the controller. Uh, especially if you're new to drones, uh, I think this would be a value. So on the, the two sticks we have here, you know, the simplest part is on the left-hand stick, you know, obviously up, it makes the quadcopter rise, down, lowers the quadcopter. So this is your altitude control. Now, this other movement left to right on this control is very important. This is the yaw, because if I, in transactional mode, which is what basically they will all start up in, is if I push this, it will turn this way. It will yaw this way. If I, if I turn it this way, it'll yaw this way. Now, what happens when I yaw it, say, for example, this way, the front of the quadcopter turns this way, okay? So its perspective now transactionally has changed. And that's part of why it's sometimes referred to as transactional flying, because each component is a different transaction in the movement of the copter. So with this, if I turn it back so the head is now facing forward again, and I were to push the stick forward because on this stick, this is in this orientation would be forward, backward. So forward in reference to the head of the copter, which is this way. Backwards in reference to the head of the copter. Left in reference to the copter. And then right in reference to the copter. Now, if I were to yaw this and turn this, so my head is now facing this way. So the, 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 the head of the copter is now facing the remote control. And I press this forward the copter is going to move in this direction. It's going to move towards the controller. It's no longer going to move forward because its head has changed. And if I continue the yaw cycle around, so it's now facing, say, at me as the pilot. You can see the camera is now facing towards me. And I push it forward. It's going to go in this direction. It's going to go towards me rather than back away from me. Now, this is how you can get lost pretty easy I think as you can see because number one you need to understand the the orientation of the copter and again that's one of the reasons they put lights on the bottom but during the day these are very hard to see and it gets up in the air and it gets a you know a few meters away from you knowing the orientation of the copter can get very difficult this is where they have FPV or first person viewing now this particular quadcopter does have an FPV camera so the idea is you watch the screen rather than the copter and then you drive it as if you're looking at the screen. Now this is sort of okay, but again, you have a very narrow perspective of the world through this camera. So again, that's pretty difficult to do. Uh, and also with regards to your perspective of your surroundings of having to visually watch the quadcopter because remember the FAA says you know you you have to fly this within your line of sight so you have to be able to see the quadcopter to legally fly it um, so that makes it difficult so what they've done is they've added what's called headless mode which means there's no longer a front or a back to this quadcopter now on the SEMAs uh, typically it's done if I switch this on a long hold on this button will activate it usually if it's bound with the quadcopter which is not because I don't want the propellers to spin up there'll be a long beep if you hold this particular button for two seconds okay so now what happens with that is is uh, this will now mean there's no front or back to this now before we go there one of the things I want to share with you is 
how does this work? How does it become headless? Well, there is a small compass electromagnetic sensor in here uh, that senses, you know, uh, cardinal directions. Now, it's very important to set this, though, before your initial flight. So whenever I set it up, even if I don't intend to use headless mode, I still set up headless mode. And to do that on the SEMAs, you, you bring both sticks down into the left, sort of like this. Now, what will happen is you hold it there, the lights on the quadcopter will flash. So check your particular quadcopter how, it, how you set uh, headless mode. Now, what happens is this now sets the direction. Now, the compass knows that this is the front of the quadcopter. And so, therefore, no matter what position we place it in yaw, it will understand its, its location in two-dimensional space. Now, what does this mean? So, I've got this set up. I'm now in headless mode. I've, at, at the start of my flight, I've, I've uh, aligned the compass. I've put it in headless mode by holding this for two seconds. It's beeped. So, now, when I push this forward... The copter will go forward. If I push it backwards, the copter will go backwards. If I yaw it, so for example, the, the intentional head of the, the copter is facing this way to the left. If I push this, it will still move in the same direction or left or right. So no matter how I yaw the copter, it's still going to move in a plane in reference to me as the pilot. Now, there's, there's good and bad to the um, aspect of headless mode because the piece is, is, is think of it as the quadcopter is over here and your remote control is over here. It's sort of tied via a string between these two. So it can only move in an orientation in the plane of the controller. Um, so if you want to do very complex flight maneuvers, it's going to be more difficult. But in general average flying it will be easier because it's simply going to move in reference to your stick now this is also very important if you get lost in your orientation and trust me unless you're very well adapted at, at various orientations you will get lost and because again as I mentioned if you're in transactional mode flying this it's going to be very difficult to see which way the head's pointing and keeping track of the direction of that head's pointing because you're going intrinsically, you know, the, the you know, human nature is press forward to go forward, press backwards to go backwards. Whereas if we, as mentioned before, yaw it this way and I press it to go forward, it's going to actually go backwards. So it's going to be counterintuitive. Or if, if the head is facing to the left and I press it forward, it's going to go to the left. Now... Uh, again, there are advantages and disadvantages of both. So, uh, you know, if I'm just flying in close proximity, I like flying in transactional mode. However, if this gets, uh, you know, out away from me, then what I like to do is I like to fly in headless mode. So my orientation is fixed and I don't have to keep track of the yaw of the copter. Okay. So now one of the things to remember too, you might be flying in orientation, you know, in transactional mode and the wind maybe takes the quadcopter out away from you. Now you're lost because the, the, the wind could have spun the quadcopter. You don't know it. You don't know the orientation of the copter. Your recovery mechanism is to hold the button for two seconds, put it in headless mode, so no matter what, you can recover this. Now, again, I'm going to stress this. This the important piece here is to have set the head of it. Now, typically, the quadcopter is going to think its head is the head. So you typically you'll start it off pointing the quadcopter out away from you. You know, in a launch scenario, that'll look something like this, where the quadcopter is pointing this way, your perspective is pointing this way. However, it's always just a good habit that I've gotten into is holding the sticks in and setting it at the start of each flight. So my startup routine on the startup of each flight is always the same. I start, after, after binding the quadcopter, I always set the um, head position. So each time, even, even though it's typically a repeat, that way I get an accurate position sensing on, sensing on the compass internally. Then I set my gimbals, even if I, I'm pretty good from the last flight, it's just you know a couple more seconds. In between each one of these, the lights you'll see the lights flash on the bottom of the quad, quadcopter indicating that that activity has been achieved. Now, once I perform those two tasks, 
I'm pretty much set. So now if I get out away from myself and I need to recover a simple two second hold on the button, as you hear the beep, now we'll actually put my uh, copter in headless mode and now I can recover it. So I can just bring it back to myself because usually it's now, say the wind's taking it out here, it's turned and if I you pull back and like this in the stick, the copter will come back into this direction and I can recover myself. So uh, again, headless mode is a great way to recover yourself if you get lost or the quadcopter gets, gets taken out away from you at a distance. So hopefully this has explained a little bit about headless mode and transactional flying and just flying in general. Um, I really haven't seen too much done like this. Now in the next episode what we'll do is we'll actually go outside and take a look at uh, putting this to use. But it, I just thought it was easier to kind of see it on the bench and how it all works. And then when we do the video outside later then you can kind of see how it all comes together. So. Again, hopefully this was helpful. If you just got a quad, you know, I think this would be a good tutorial. I wish I would have seen a tutorial like this. I kind of had to learn this by trial and error, which also included losing a quadcopter sort of in the flyaway situation because I did get lost um, in the home position. Now, the other thing I'll mention is don't wait too long before entering in into uh, headless mode because there is distance. Now, I've got the extended antenna system on here, but if this gets out too far and gets away from you, even going to headless mode is going to save you. So if you think you're getting in trouble where the copter is getting away from you, go to headless mode, recover as quick as possible. Do not wait. Anyways, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you got questions, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.